So how much damage did Hurricane Milton really have in Disney World? How do Disney fans feel about $26 cake slices? And we found an annual pass holder hack that feels illegal. All the latest Disney and theme park news is coming up right now here on DFB Guide. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Vlog. This week has been pretty stressful for most people, so let's all just take a deep breath together. <sighs> okay, good, hope you're settled in. Let's talk about everything that went down this week. Hurricane Milton ripped through Florida earlier this week. The powerful storm closed businesses, hotels, and even theme parks across the state. Disney World closed on October 9th and remained closed on October 10th. As of yesterday, October 11th, the parks have reopened. There has been a lot of discourse on social media about Hurricane Milton's impact at Disney World, and some false information has gained attention. Many people have asked questions like, did Disney World flood or what happened to Cinderella Castle? We're here to answer your questions and show you what Disney World looks like after Hurricane Milton. We have a team of Disney World locals, so this is not our first time dealing with a hurricane in Central Florida. In our experience, the crowds in the Disney World parks following a hurricane are typically average to slightly lower than average. Upon entering Disney's Animal Kingdom, the park seemed to look normal. We didn't immediately spot any damage near the park entrance. The crowds didn't look any bigger or smaller than normal, and by 10 a.m., Navi River Journey was already up to a 50-minute wait. Over by the Magic Kingdom, the paths and guest areas around the Transportation and Ticket Center were open and clear. There were a few fallen tree branches, but cast members took care to remove any kind of debris from the paths. But now for the moment that everyone's been waiting for, the status of Magic Kingdom. The storm did not impact Cinderella Castle, and Main Street USA was not flooded. On Main Street USA, the Walt Disney World Railroad remained closed. According to a cast member, the train will not likely reopen anytime soon as Disney monitors the trees near the tracks to ensure stability and safety. So far, it seems like the Disney parks did not suffer any major damage. Thanks to some clips sent in from DFB readers during the hurricane, we can also peek inside the Disney World hotels. From what we've seen, the hotels did not sustain too much serious damage either. Everyone here at DFB is safe and we thank you so much for asking and leaving thoughtful comments on our socials this week. We want to shout out all of the amazing cast members at Disney. They truly are the magic from the hurricane ride out teams inside the resorts to the cleanup crews the day after. Our amazing fun filled vacations would not be the same without them. So my challenge to you if you're going to Disney this week find a great cast member tell them they're doing an amazing job and maybe submit a cast compliment. If you were a Disney World annual pass holder, then you know there are a few tricks that can make your park hopping adventures a little smoother, but every once in a while you discover a hack so good you'll wonder why it's even allowed. Well, we've got one of those for you today, and trust me, it's totally legit. So here's the scenario. You're in the midst of planning your Disney day, and you've got your heart set on scoring a virtual queue for Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind in Epcot. Well, you know how it goes. You wake up early, grab that VQ at 7 a.m., and you're all set for your day at Epcot. But what if you don't want to start your day? at Epcot. Well, what if Magic Kingdom is calling your name, but you still want to ride Guardians later? As an annual pass holder, you've got a whole lot more flexibility than you think. Our reporter initially made an Epcot reservation with one goal in mind, snagging that Guardians VQ, and he got it. But here's what he did. Instead of sticking to his Epcot reservation for the entire morning, he decided to modify it. So after grabbing his VQ for Guardians, he went ahead and changed his park reservation from Epcot to Magic Kingdom. I hear you saying, wait, what, you can do that? Uh, apparently you can. Once you've secured your virtual queue for Guardians, you don't actually have to stay at Epcot for the entire morning, especially if your callback time isn't until later in the day. Our reporter changed his reservation to Magic Kingdom, popped over there for a bit of fun, and then later park hopped back to Epcot when it was time for his Guardians ride. The hack works perfectly for those with annual passes, because as a pass holder, you can park hop at any time after you scan into your first park. That means you can spend your morning at Magic Kingdom, get in all your favorite rides, and then head to Epcot when your VQ is called. So in this example, no need to start your day at Epcot unless you really want to. We're not going to lie, this is one of those pass holder hacks that feels like you're bending the rules, but you're not. Disney's system allows you to modify your park reservation, and as long as you got that sweet VQ in hand, you're golden. One of our favorite things to do here at DFB is analyze concept art. <laughs> it's a pretty important part of the job when we're prepping for new attractions coming to the parks. And today we need to talk about the concept art for the Villains Land coming to Magic Kingdom. Villains Land is a concept that fans have been asking for for years, and now it's finally underway. The expansion to Magic Kingdom will be located behind Big Thunder Mountain Railroad, and the concept art looks pretty incredible. 
Disney's shared that the land will be home to two major attractions, along with shopping and dining. They haven't shared details on what those attractions will be, but the concept art reveals some roller coaster-like elements, and there are two different sections of concept art that look like roller coasters. The first section of concept art that looks like a coaster is located in the bottom middle of the artist's rendering, beneath the main walkway. There's like a cavern area with waterfalls that a ride vehicle is zooming through. We can even see the track appears to wind around and loop through the cavern twice. However, there's also a piece of ride track near the upper left corner of the concept art. This section's decorated with thorns and looks like it's gonna feature some sharp curves and maybe an inversion. It's a completely different color scheme and general vibe than the other section of track, which makes us wonder if these are two separate rides. What do you think? Ultimately, we won't know for sure about the attractions until Disney announces more details about the land. The concept art also features a Maleficent-inspired section and a spooky castle, so it's possible that the attractions could be located in either of those areas instead. Construction for this new addition is set to begin in 2025, and we can't wait to watch it progress. This will likely draw lots of guests to the theme park when it opens, so start planning those trips now. Magic Key Holders can experience early previews of Tiana's Bayou Adventure in Disneyland on select days between October 21st and November 12th. In order for Magic Key Holders to ride the new attraction, they must have a Disneyland Park reservation on the day they wish to ride. They will then be given the opportunity to join a virtual queue in the Disneyland app beginning at 7 a.m. A second virtual queue will open at 12 p.m. for Magic Key Holders who have already entered Disneyland Park or Disney California Adventure. The ride officially opens in the rebranded Bayou Country Land at Disneyland on November 15th, just three days after the last preview date. Of course, we've already experienced the Magic Kingdom version several times. You can check out our video to learn more about this new attraction and what you might expect to see in the Disneyland version. Now, we all know that being a Disney fan can be expensive, but if you're planning on heading to Disneyland Resort soon, we've got a warning for you. Disneyland has just revealed ticket price increases for both Disneyland Park and Disney California Adventure. The starting price for one day one park tickets has stayed the same at $104 per person, but you may be paying more now to visit on the more crowded days. For single day tickets, the most expensive price for visiting one of the two parks used to be $194 per day. Now those same dates have gone up to $206. So if you're visiting on November 3rd, November 25th to the 29th, or December 21st to January 4th, you'll be paying over $200 per adult just to go to one park. The tickets are priced in tiers depending on how crowded Disney expects the parks will be, so holidays are typically the most expensive times to visit. For a few random examples of price changes, October 20th used to be priced at $184 for a single day single park ticket, now it's up to $196. November 7th was $119 per person, now it's $126. And January 26th was $154, but now it's gone up to $164. So if you haven't bought your tickets for your upcoming trip yet, you'll need to rerun those prices and see how you've been affected. We've also noticed a price increase for Magic Key Passes, which are not currently on sale, but are expected to be sold again later this year. Big news, y'all! Something huge has happened at Disney World's upcoming Cake Bake Shop by Gwendolyn Rogers. This restaurant will have both a sit-down dining room and a quick-service bakery counter, and it's located at Disney's Boardwalk Inn. We've been following its construction for a long time, and we can't wait to go inside and check out all the food and drinks, and now we're one step closer. The construction walls have finally come down at Cake Bake Shop. More importantly though, we managed to check out the restaurant's menu, which is posted outside the entrance. Yep, we finally have the menu, y'all! You're gonna find a variety of breakfast and brunch items here, including cocktails like a mimosa and Bloody Mary, along with eats like breakfast cake, cake for breakfast, yes please, eggs, salad, waffles, French toast, pancakes, quiche, croaks, croissants, as well as a variety of sides and beverages, including alcoholic beverages, non-alcoholic beverages, coffee. Don't forget, they are gonna have a champagne bar here. And lunch and dinner include appetizers like gumbo poutine, my goodness, crab cakes, pesto burrata, and more. A variety of quiches, sandwiches, soups, and salads are also available. Entrees include a burger, chicken piccata, steak frites, and more. You can also order a variety of cocktails, that champagne, wines, and beer. Okay, but it's the sweet treats you're gonna be able to get here that have us drooling. We're talking a bunch of pies and cookies and cheesecakes and French pastries, macarons, homemade fudge, chocolate truffles, and more. But now, will you look at these gorgeous cakes? Note that there are two pumpkin cakes on the menu, making us think they're seasonal additions, perhaps hinting at an opening date soon? 
However, you Disney fans have some thoughts about this new spot now that the menu's been revealed, and we hear you. Now, to be clear, the Cake Bake Shop is not owned by Disney. It's operated by a third-party company, which owns two locations in Indiana already. So these prices that we're actually seeing are not Disney's doing, but that doesn't change the fact that many folks think they are really high. And by that, we mean one slice of cake will cost you $22 to $26. One reader on Facebook said, $12 for a croissant? Is it gold-dipped? Wow, just wow. Another reader, Holly, replied to a comment and said the following, the two original locations are in Indiana. I've been to both locations several times. Reservations must be made in advance, and they are both extremely popular destinations. If the prices can be justified in the Midwest, in an otherwise mostly non-touristy location, I have no doubt they will be wildly supported and reservations will be hard to come by at Disney World. Other readers shared that this is certainly a special occasion place, and we have no doubt that that will be the case for this Disney World location as well. But there's one problem. While it's a great point, saying that in Indiana the locations do really well, that could be partially because people aren't already on vacation there, so it may be an easier choice to try out the restaurant for a special occasion like a birthday. Whereas in Disney World, you may have already spent thousands of dollars on a special occasion vacation and may not be nearly as open to spending $100 plus dining here. However, we'll be interested to see how this restaurant stands with the Orlando Lowe locals and or the annual pass holders who don't spend as much each visit when coming to the resort. They may be more of the target audience for this restaurant, but only time will tell. We're looking forward to giving this restaurant a try and bringing you an honest review. Stay tuned to the website for that announcement, but if you want to be the first to hear about it, be sure to sign up for our newsletter. And the news gets sent there first. This is your reminder not to take your favorite Disney World food and drinks for granted, as they could disappear at any moment. Baseline Tap House is a corner pub in Disney's Hollywood Studios that specializes in California brews, wine, and small bites like Bavarian pretzels and spiced almonds. By the way, that pretzel's not small. It's very big. It was also home to a super popular cider. We say was because this restaurant currently no longer serves it. As it turns out, the Ace Space Bloody Orange Hard Cider is missing from the menu and is no longer offered. We spoke with a cast member and she said that the company that makes the drink went out of business and was repurchased by the original owner, so it will take a few months before the cider's made again. Unfortunately, it's unclear at this time if Disney will get it again, even when the drink is back in production. Cast member added that the Bloody Orange Hard Cider was one of the restaurant's most popular drinks, so they're hoping it eventually makes its way back. We recently stopped by Candy Palace at Disneyland Park to try a new version of the iconic Rice Krispie Treat. This one's inspired by a seriously underrated Disney movie. For $8.99, you can snag the Cusco's Poison Rice Krispie Treat. Yep, it's made for all the fans of The Emperor's New Groove. The treat is pretty large, but we were still a little disappointed by the price. The design is really what you're paying for here. It's made to mimic the llama poison bottle from the movie, complete with bright pink coloring. As far as taste goes, it's your pretty standard Rice Krispie Treat. Extra sweet, though, because of all the icing on top, but it's not anything special to write home about. We can see people buying this for the pics, but it's not really a culinary masterpiece. We recently headed over to the Boathouse at Disney Springs to try a new limited time cocktail they've got during the month of October. The Turning the Tide drink comes with a limited edition pink rubber duck, and a portion of the proceeds are being donated to the Lynn Sage Breast Cancer Foundation. The drink is made with 50 States vodka, peach schnapps, raspberries, lemon juice, and simple syrup for $16. Similar to the popular Duck Duck Raz cocktail here, but it's pink. This drink was definitely on the sweet side with a fun tang from the lemon juice, and it's so pretty and refreshing with the berries, and we love the Fifty Shades Vodka. It's a newcomer that's catching on fast. Raglan Road, Homecoming, and Paddlefish all carry it along with jelly rolls. The vodka is made in the USA, Michigan actually, but the owners live in Florida. It's very smooth and it's made with sweet corn instead of traditional potatoes. It was pretty similar in taste to the Duck Duck Raz drink, but we think this one is slightly less sweet than the blue version since it's made with plain vodka instead of the Stoli Raspberry. If you're someone who likes a fun take on a Cosmo Martini, think of this kind of like that. Plus, you get to take home a cute little pink rubber ducky and you get to donate to the Breast Cancer Foundation, so it's a win-win. A big reason why we love to review snacks and Disney World is one, we enjoy eating them, but two, we want to make sure you're not wasting your hard-earned money on snacks that aren't going to meet your expectations. This next one is one we would tell you to maybe think twice about before you buy. We're headed over to Disney's Hollywood Studios to try some spooky snacks for Halloween. First up is the Ghost Cream Puff from ABC Commissary for $5.49. This is a sour apple custard filled cream puff topped with toasted meringue and chocolate chips. And yeah, that's sour apple custard. We weren't quite sure how this one was gonna play out, but boy, this is a very cute little snack. Unfortunately, the cuteness is pretty much where the good aspects end. This might be the 
worst Disney World snack we've had in a long time. The cream puff shell and the toasted meringue were a bit too toasty. They were on the verge of being burnt and bitter. The sour apple custard filling was so sour and was beyond tangy, almost like a sour candy rather than a natural sourness. The combination of the burnt flavors and the sourness really did not go well together, and this made for a disappointing treat. If you like really sour candy and really burnt marshmallows, this might be for you. We were hoping for a miracle with this next one, the Caramel Apple Shake from Dockside Diner. It's $8.99. It's a caramel and green apple shake topped with M&M's white chocolate bark. It's supposed to have Halloween sprinkles, but they didn't have them when we stopped by. In fact, they didn't even technically have the shake. There was no menu for it, but they did have it and they could make it, so they did. And we were pleasantly surprised, especially after being burned by that last treat. The caramel flavor is the most pronounced and is nice and sweet with a hint of nuttiness from that caramelized sugar. The green apple comes through at the end with a tanginess that we wish the cream puff had. The white chocolate bark is pretty average, but did add a nice creaminess to the rest of the shake. If you love green apple flavored candy, you'll probably like this one. It's definitely on the artificial side, but it's a fun and festive treat that we wouldn't mind trying again, but we're not gonna run to do it. We've got some news about Takumi Te in the Japan Pavilion in Epcot's World Showcase. After its reopening, its hours remained limited to Thursday through Mondays, meaning it was closed on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. But a few weeks ago, Takumi Te expanded its hours and added Wednesdays to when it would be open. We recently noticed that the restaurant will add Tuesdays back to its schedule as of November 5th, meaning the restaurant will be open seven days a week for the first time since its reopening. You'll be able to book the restaurant for dinner every day from 4.30 to 7.30 p.m. We recently visited Takumi Te, and although the restaurant is pricey, we'd go back again. The dining experience is second to none and the food is well presented and very tasty. You can read our full review on the website now. The Walt Disney World Swan and Dolphin Hotels are home to some criminally underrated restaurants, and recently we got to try out some menu items from Amare, the hotel's Mediterranean restaurant. We started off with the charred octopus, which is $19, served on a fennel puree and topped with pickled onion, crispy potato shards, and pistachio gremolata. We loved this dish. The octopus was nice and meaty, but not fishy or too salty, while the fennel puree was smooth and earthy and it paired well with the octopus. The crispy potato shards reminded us of shoestring french fries. They were perfectly crisp and delicious. For the main course, we had the amare. That's the flatbread that I love and don't ever stop talking about. It's $20. And it's topped with leek, potato, lardons, or lardon, however you want me to say it, roasted black pepper, and gruyere. This is a favorite, favorite, favorite. The crust was perfect. It was crispy, but light, and just enough to carry all the delicious toppings without being overwhelming. The gruyere was delicious and subtle, and we loved how thinly shaved the potatoes were. All the ingredients balance each other out well on this one, and that black pepper has a very surprising impact. Finally, we rounded out the meal with dessert. The citrus cannelloni isn't listed on the online menu, but surprise, it was another one of our faves. The shell was soft and crumbly, but held the cannoli filling incredibly well. The filling was a wonderful creamy texture with just a bit of oranges and citrus fruits in it. If you're averse to pulp-like textures, it might not be for you, but it didn't bother us. Ultimately, we always have some really yummy eats at Amare, so don't pass it up during your next trip. It's an underrated gem for sure, and it's over there at the Swan Reserve. Epcot's Food and Wine Festival is the largest festival of the year, and we've got the very best tips and information and advice to be sure you enjoy every minute of your time. But there's only a little over a month left. Our guide has all the must-try bites, a handy map, and tips to make your taste adventure stress-free. You're going to find all of our Disney World guides at dfbstore.com. Don't forget to use code YouTube to get an extra special discount. So here's what you need to know if you're going to Disney World this week. I've had a lot of DMs on my socials this week. People asking, should I still go to Disney World? Is it still okay? Is, you know, it's going to be closed or whatever. So... I am happy to say Disney World is open, everything is ready to go, so you should definitely keep your trips on the books. Currently, October 16th and 18th no longer have Park Pass reservations available for Magic Kingdom, but all the other parks are available for reservations for theme park tickets on those days. It is possible that this could be people moving around their trip due to Hurricane Milton, but remember, as long as you have a park hopper ticket, you can make a reservation for a different park and start there, then hop over to Magic Kingdom. It is possible that Magic Kingdom may feel a bit more crowded on these days, but you'll still have lots of fun. Okay, now it's time for me to remind you of all the current, ongoing, and upcoming refurbishments and construction around Disney World, because that could impact your vacation too. First up, in Magic Kingdom, the Jungle Cruise is currently closed, with an anticipated reopening of October 18th, so keep your eyes peeled on Friday if you're going to Magic Kingdom. Over in Epcot, Test Track is closed for a big refurb with a completely new theme. The updated ride will take inspiration from 
World of Motion, the ride that was originally here when the park opened in 1982. At this time, a specific reopening timeline hasn't been announced, but we do know that Test Track will open in 2025. The Little Mermaid, a musical adventure, is coming to Disney's Hollywood Studios in fall 2024, which is getting close to the end of fall, Disney, so any updates? And Lightning McQueen's Racing Academy has closed permanently to make way for a brand new Disney Villains show debuting at Sunset Showcase in the summer of 2025. As for Animal Kingdom, these things aren't closed yet, but you might want to make them a priority on your upcoming trip because it could be your last time to experience them. It's tough to be a bug housed in the Tree of Life will receive a Zootopia-themed makeover and will become Zootopia Better Together. The new attraction will open in winter of 2025. And Dinoland USA's days are numbered as well. That land will be transformed into the Tropical Americas-themed Pueblo Esperanza with Encanto and Indiana Jones rides, entertainment, shopping, dining, and lots of theming. This new land is set to open in 2027 with construction starting this fall. The construction is expected to happen in phases though, so you'll have a chance to experience Dinosaur one more time. So Disney's known to sell some creative popcorn buckets and sippers, and the latest sipper is a Toy Story fan's dream. The new Halloween exclusive Toy Story Alien Sipper has landed in Disney World. This adorable one features one of the aliens from Toy Story dressed up for Halloween as Buzz Lightyear. It's even carrying a three-eyed pumpkin bucket for all his trick-or-treating candy. We spotted this sipper at various locations around Disney's Hollywood Studios, including ABC Commissary and the Coca-Cola stand near the entrance. It can be added to any non-alcoholic drink for an additional 1369. Now it's still very much the rainy season in Disney World as proven by the recent storms. If you're heading to the park soon, we want you to be prepared. These are the rainy day essentials our team uses when visiting the parks on the rainiest of days and hopefully these things can help make your days a little easier as well. While Disney World sells ponchos around the parks and resorts, you do not want to wait until it starts raining to get one. Instead, purchase a high quality poncho. We love the Frog Togs poncho. We've used it, we've reviewed it, and our reporters wear it all the time. It's 100% waterproof, it's breathable and packable. There are some items that you don't want to get wet and want to keep safe while visiting the parks, so we love this wet dry clutch bag because it can attach to a stroller and it's made of waterproof fabric. Also comes in a ton of Disney styles. This can work on those sunny days as your kind of like swimming bag. Like if your kid goes into the Casey Jr. splash pad and gets completely soaking wet, you can put all of the wet clothes into this wet bag and then dress them in the dry clothes that you have in your other bag. If you want a one and done essential item, this is it. This fanny pack comes with a 10 piece kit that includes ponchos, a water bottle, a fan, a reusable straw, and more. Plus if you buy two and enter code Maxi and Nova at checkout, you'll get 5% off your order. Now, if you prefer to wear sneakers during a rainy day, but don't want to get them wet, our reporters carry these shoe covers in their park bag. They are so easy to put on and they are slip resistant and they work unbelievably well. We've even tested them in hurricanes. If you're interested to try any of these items, they're all linked down in the description below. That's all for this week's latest news. If you want all the Disney news delivered right to your inbox, don't forget to sign up for our free newsletter. The link to sign up is in the description box below. Thanks for listening and thanks for watching. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we'll see you real soon.